Yo, what's happening, YouTube fam? This is your boy J Money here to bring you guys some World Chalice dueling um, without a uh, Goblin. Now, Nightmare Goblin wasn't necessarily a necessity in this deck. Uh, however, it does make the Undyne package, you know, where you're playing your Genix Undyne's, your Rosenix, and your Genix controller. It makes it a little less favorable because a lot of times the reason why you played Undyne because it got you out of those awkward spots if you didn't uh, open to Venus. Because you would um, summon your token off Rosenix, uh, summon your controller, or you summon your Link Spider, summon your controller off the Link Spider, make M Duck, and then make Goblin uh, to discard, and then you're going to use M Duck to specialty, and then you actually save your normal summon for the legacy you're going to search out. But that's not really uh, the case anymore, uh, thanks to uh, Goblin getting banned. So, with that being said, you know, we have to deviate. Uh, to playing uh, Reperticus to where you, uh, let's say, um, let's say you do have the Lee in your hand, you can link off the, um, ooh, this, this is tough. So you, what you would end up doing is you would link off, uh, you would link the um, Link Spider and the, uh, what is it, the uh, the Undyne into Reperticus, keep the M-Duck there, then link the M uh, turn it into a dinosaur, link the Reperticus and the M Duck into a summon sword so you can use M Duck to special summon your Lee. And instead of like let's say summoning Eva from the deck since you already have your Lee, you can summon Sork for a Shine Ball and uh, get your World Legacy off that way. Um, we're not playing Sir Yuja, which uh, is surprising. Um, I just don't have the space for it. And oftentimes, if I if I have any playable hand, I will essentially have the combo anyway. Uh, thanks to Undyne and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, I have found myself missing it from time to time. But I really need something that points straight down. Um, that's pretty beefy. And Unicorn in this format is pretty necessary along with Phoenix. Because, again, I'm facing a lot of back row. I would play Cerberus like I did last format, but this format there's a lot more back row running around, so Phoenix and Unicorn are very necessary. So I did end up losing one match, and it was to Altergeist, because Altergeist, like True Dracos, is just one hell of a damn matchup for Chalice because of um Chalice can deal with like anything and everything that is um not floodgates. Like even when it comes to like regular trap cards. Uh, you will be able to exchange blow for blow uh, pretty easily. Uh, now with this one, I believe, I think this is a challenge duel. I'm not sure. This could be Necroz. Um, so forgive me if it does appear to be so. If it is, then we will, yep, this is Necroz. So we will go ahead and leave this and it starts here. So... Uh, this one is a pretty good match. I'm not gonna lie. This is against pure sky strikers But then again, we don't lose the pure sky strikers because of the fact that hatred aid just completely blows them out game two and game three You just make them go first now here. I think he drops some permanents. I'm not sure. Okay. No, no, no This is game one. This is when I was still playing um, uh, What's his name? This is when I was still playing uh, Gumblar and Herald of Orange Lights um, I just I just found it very lackluster. I felt like only in this scenario right here Only if you're under Joel and Lockbird is going for Gumblar like really good But this deck still just like this along with any other deck. It's just Joel Ooh, Joel and Lockbird. I swear some needs to be done with that card Like again, I, I don't know how many times I have to say it just ending your opponent's turn on turn zero essentially is a bad idea it's a very bad idea because it takes no setup so the fastest decks in the game can use it and capitalize on the fact that your turn is hereby ended and just you know go for game and that's exactly the same problem we have when it came to max c so right here of course he has engage but he doesn't have the plus one here he afterburners and i go guard dragon and gate and you know he could guard sword engage of course he has a ray in his hand already uh, go figure. So he Widow Winkers takes my wall. Sure, that that's fine. And, you know, he puts it back. He gets multi-roll. I can't OTK him, I don't think. But I go um, Undyne, and I'm going for the uh, play. But I forgot, hey, Link Spider is 
uh, kind of, I kind of went into it because, you know, to hell with um, Joel and Lockbird. Uh, Joel and Lockbird sucks ass, so I opened two anti-spells, which is great. He impermanences, but you know what? I have Call by the Grave too to stop his hand traps and spells. So, I'm just like, okay, he, if, if I'm not going to play, you're not going to play either. That's how this works. That's the same thing when it, when I when he dropped Ash and Joel, I went for the Gumblar to try to hit his whole hand, because you know that's that's what you want to do. If if people want to drop Joel and make you not play, you better make sure they don't play either. Uh, simple as that. Honestly, I feel like the best way to fix Joel and Lockbird is to make it to where both play. You know, it lasts for two turns. You know, I don't think it should last for just that one turn because then that creates a massive, massive, massive swing. Um, in tempo, if Droll lasted, um, from not only the opponent's turn, but their turn as well, then people would honestly think twice about it because it's like, oh, my opponent can't play, but I'm not going to be able to play either kind of thing. You know, I feel like that would be like the best check and balance to Droll to where it lasts through both players' turns. Because yeah, when it's in effect, both players can't add or whatnot, but what does that matter if you're not, if it's not your turn? Um, but that's enough rambling. As you can see here, we got the um, infinite and permanence, and he rips my firewall, and I'm still going for OTK anyway. And let me go and pause it real quick. So he rips firewall, and right now he has a raid in his graveyard. So the plan is uh, to not give him too many searches first. I decide to go for my draws first and then start searching um, to mitigate the. Um, the possibility of him getting into Droll within his first like couple cards and so what I wanted to do uh, was use this Foolish Barrel on Eva what I absolutely needed to when I filled my grave up enough to add Herald so then I can negate one of two cards either negate his Joel Lockbird or negate his um, Ray when it comes out of the graveyard because I am going to try gate banish his Suzuku and go for game uh, so yeah See, Shared Ride, I don't mind. I don't mind Shared Ride because, well, it requires your opponent to actually have a turn. It requires them to have a turn uh, to use it, and that's fair. You know, not only that, but he's plussing off of it, sure, which really, it kind of sucks, but uh, at the same time, it's not stopping me from playing. And this guy clearly doesn't, you know, understand the concept of chain blocking, so, you know, that's that's that. So, we go try gate. And we go Orum, and we're going Orum for an Ib and all that good stuff. And so he ogres on my Trigate, and I'm like, okay, Herald Negate. And yeah, it's a good game, essentially. And so yeah, that was the end of that match. Now we head to the next one. And uh, it's a nice, it's a good friend of mine, and we're doing a mirror match, except he is not playing just straight Wall Chalice, he is playing... Uh, he's splashing all these like leg world legacy archetypes into one and he's by far the closest to making it work He's splashing chalice with crusadias with um, uh, Orphigals You know, they're all world legacy based archetypes yeah, I'm surprised he hadn't bit the mech knights or the um, Well, okay crawlers are just too slow, but um, Nightmares is a world legacy archetype too now that I think about it, but he doesn't play uh, Nightmares either. So there we go. We got uh, some of the Crusadia stuff going off. We got the Nagirsu. Um, he's going for the draw three. He linked it. Like, if, you, if you're questioning some of the plays that are being made right now, it's because we already know what's going on. Um, and we're just speeding up the process. So he goes Magius and all that. Summons uh, World Lance and gets the token out. He used Firewall to bounce the, um, the new Crusadia Link Monster back in. You know, he makes the um, Equimax and all that good stuff. So, you know, now he's going into Orphigals. Galatea. I'll grab this back and I believe sets, yeah, the Prime. And this person really, really, really loves Survivor. Don't know why, but he gets the Counter Trap. That, that's a-okay. That's fine. So, um... He thought that uh, water, f uh, that sorrow can negate cards or effects regarding spell of trap cards, but he has to negate the spell of trap card activation, so I let him negate. And so I go Reperticus. This is why we play Reperticus right here, so we can, you know, still have the combo. 
If we go Brilliant Fusion on the um, Equal Max and we add back Firewall, is going to get Venus back to our hand because we're going to summon it eventually and all that mess. And so here we make our Orin play and we revive our Firewall. And we go Phoenix to bust that out, but you know, that's power, so his equal mass is now unaffected. So I'm gonna clear up that zone and get his long gears off the board first. Okay, so let's see. Pause, we go Ningirsu, and we are drawing some cards. And yeah, I tried to send his other back row. It was Pod of Desires, go try gate Cerberus to try and blow up the long gearsu. Didn't read it. And apparently it can't be destroyed by card effects. So I just go decide to you know, um, I summon Ningirsu again. Trigate Banish. Um, oop, yeah, I, I messed up. I noticed that I don't think... Uh, I didn't have even my extra... Oh, I did. Okay, never mind. So we go Spider. And he tries to Lance, and I go, okay, Trigate, because I know it's in your hand. And all the good stuff, so... That was it on that one. Uh, next we go to my loss. It was a very, very, very fast loss. Because we're playing Altergeist, and yeah, fuck Altergeist, guys, fuck Altergeist. Um, fuck anything that plays Floodgates in general. So he impermanences the Duck. so this is just a bad situation in general because I'm playing a 46 card deck and I only play three Kaijus, and for some reason I open all three Kaijus. Weirdly enough, so I'm just like, you know, we're just gonna go next game. I'm gonna side my red reboots and evenlies and go second. And here I'm hoping, I'm hoping to God that I just draw open a red reboot so I can just OTK the shit out of him. Uh, so none of his trap cards can go off. Because if you can stop Alter Guys from flipping over their trap cards, uh, you're in a game winning state. I highly recommend in this format, instead of even least because they're easy to play around and people can still keep their best card, play red reboot. Please play red reboot. And so in that situation, uh, the reason why I didn't resolve undying is because i sided out my three kaijus and put in three red reboots and all that good stuff and i had just opened the rosenix so right here last round or last match we have another alter guys matchup but it only lasts one game because he quits and here i want to show you why you don't auto lose if your board gets wiped i'm going to show you now i don't get waterfront at all this entire time, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, I would have had a much easier time against the Alter Guys player because Gamma Seal can literally stop everything, even the protocol, and all the good stuff from being activated. And that's what I really wanted to do. So, Water uh, Water Pond gets revealed. You know, Lee gets summoned. We grab our legacy. We use Firewall to grab Imduck back to hand. We sack off the Firewall, of course, after we're uh, it's already done serving its use. We go Reperticus, we go Ningirsu, we go for that chain block. And we're drawing duplicates all over the place, so... You know what, it's whatever. Even in a 46 card deck, you still get all the duplicates. As you can see, I got all three Kaijus the other game. So what's happening here is, um, yeah. I decide to go all in. It says, I, I... Now, keep in mind, I don't know what he's playing. If he's playing any special summon deck, this is a good game. But he's playing, um... Alter guys, and to see summon multi faker, I assume he has protocol down, uh, but I didn't anticipate the mirror force, so um, I sent everything. I sent the try get to the graveyard, and everything went back to the extra deck. Look at my extra deck, I have seven extra deck left. And you would think that you know this will be over, but as you can see, I just go leave from grave, banish legacy at heart, grab two more cards. It's far from over, we're still going. You know, this is why you don't see. This is the power of the deck. Um, if you know exactly what you're doing, you could easily um, know. You, you, it's it's so amazing. It's just like you can keep going so long after the point where anyone else would have quit after getting blown out by that storming. But I was smart and saved some cards in my extra deck and all that good stuff. So what I did here was I finally banished the Rosenix to summon Link Spider, right? Then I used Link Spider to summon the Chosen out of the hand. I kept the guard dragon in hand. I went for the Imduck. And so what he ended up trying to do right here was um uh, right here he goes Siliquitas to bounce my Imduck. But I was smart to discard the guard dragon even though I was under a protocol because I could still discard. At that point I could banish and get the vanilla and get the Imduck right back 
to waste his Siliquitas, and I went Orem and brought back the um, Ningirsu. I sent his Siliquitas first, so then when I go and decide to Phoenix his um, uh, protocol, uh, he doesn't get it back. So he Milo seeks, he sends my Ningirsu, that's fine. So right here, I had Soul Charge, but I didn't play it because I was already went into battle phase. This is the same turn that I got blown out by the Storming, by the way. Keep that in mind. Now, um, even if I didn't draw the Soul Charge next, he would have set two. One of them was a Manifestation. Now, um, right here, I was definitely going to end up Soul Charging and reviving Ningirsu, Trigate. The Guard Dragon was going to be over here next to the um, Phoenix. So I can negate his uh, Siliquitas when it comes out because he is definitely going to flip Manifestation over on the Soul Charge. And Guard Dragon can actually negate because there is no um, a protocol on the field. But he would have ended up getting it back. But even if I didn't have the Soul Charge, I have Legacy Engrave for next turn to grab Succession and revive Ningirsu. Guard Dragon... Or no, I was going to guard dragon first and use Orm to revive Ningirsu and then use Succession on Trigate and really start going in. Either or, I would have probably just Orm the Trigate right here next to the Phoenix. So I can have the double co-link and just start just caving his stuff in. And this is all without normal summoning, so at any point I could just normal summon the Christia and get it. So, yeah guys, Ghost of Show. You don't give up uh, even if you get your whole field rolled out. This is why I don't care if I get sphere moded. Because if I get sphere moded, I know I still have plays. I know I can still uh, just come back the very next turn and just win the duel. Because World Legacy is a card, you can grab Heart, put Orum back in your extra deck, and then you just go back into that Orum and start reviving your power uh, Link monsters that are in your graveyard and start busting your opponent. Uh, you just use tear them apart. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tidbit, guys. Um, I This is not a final build. Just going to let you know that now. I do want to still be able... I, I like Gumblar. I like Gumblar and the two Heralds. I might just find space for him in the side deck somewhere. Because I really want to be able to just... If I'm going to draw in Lockbird, I want to make sure if I can't play, my opponent's not playing. Uh, point blank. Um, there's no way I'm just gonna allow my opponent to play if he's not gonna allow me to play. That ain't happening, so, um, I don't know what I'll end up taking out because I know targeting is good again, so Chalice, I'm surprised it's not in the main deck, but I don't know. So, I hope you enjoyed this, guys, in regards to World Chalice. For some of you, uh, newer players that, um, want to get into it or have started playing into it but don't know all these nice little intricate applications and intricate little things you can end up doing like with guard dragon like you know when i discarded for the negate but you know even though protocol was on the field and i was fully aware it was on the field i just wanted to get it back in the graveyard because he bounced my m duck just so i can produce another normal to make the m duck again so i can still continue to play the game things like that make a huge difference uh case in point he quit because he knew i was uh no matter how many times he stopped me i was going to keep going because if you one for one trade, like I said, when it comes to this deck and interruptions, if you one for one trade, uh, I will win that battle every single time because I can resource my graveyard. And I did that, I took advantage of that to the maximum. So, um, again, not final build. So, with that being said, take this with a grain of salt. It is subject to change. I want to reduce this deck size down. Um,. So, yeah, look out for that. So, thank you guys very much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am signing off.